Hello there fellow Jason Becker fans. In this video you will not only learn a crazy sexy cool sweet picking piece, you will also learn the method that makes this seemingly very advanced piece a walk in the park. But to do so you have to follow these critical steps to the point and not skip any of the parts. There's no doubt that the black cat arpeggio seems totally overwhelming at first, but the key here is to not let yourself be fooled by the complete piece. Because as soon as you dissect the arpeggios into smaller individual patterns, it instantly becomes much more manageable. So when we go through this video step by step, you will automatically perfect every little detail in the sweep picking technique, giving you the fundamentals to achieve speed, even to the tempo where Jason played it. But here's the kicker. Before we dive into the video, I want you to take out your calendar and jot down a specific time every day where you're going to rehearse this lesson. This method creates the habit which is the basis of mastery. Preferably take at least three weeks, but you could also write down a date where you would like to present it to someone, or anything really. But make sure that it's a goal which is realistic to you, but also that stretches you. Let's rock! This Jason Becker arpeggio piece from the Black Cat with Cacophony is uh, pretty bizarre. It sounds very much like uh, six tuplets and many of the shapes are played as six tuplets. But there is a few of the patterns that deviate from those very traditional ways of playing six tuplets, sweep picking, triad arpeggios. And I really think that they inspire to, to learn new patterns because sometimes if you are very used to the sweep picking triads, they can become maybe a little bit stale. And in many cases you actually end up playing those same triad um, inversions again and again and again. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that and they continue to sound awesome, but I really think this uh, black cat with cacophony uh, really it's really inspires. In the first one where we play a B minor, it, uh, the way that it uh, moves into the next arpeggio is in itself very interesting. And let's divide it up so that we practice little pieces at the time so they're much easier to gain speed in. What I did was actually when I was learning this piece, I very soon uh, fi found out that there were a few spots that was really challenging for me. And then there were some spots that was really easy and fell into the to what I would normally do when I play arpeggios. But the first one is, as I said, quite challenging. It goes like this. So I start out here playing a B minor and I would call it the first inversion because then we move into the second inversion uh, of three inversions of the B minor here. Um, I play on the low E string again, mind the seventh string here. The note that I start on is your low E string. I start with an upstroke on the seventh fret on the low E string with my index finger. And then I move into the tenth fret with my little finger with a downstroke. And then I use this critical technique to the sweep picking technique. You got to master this technique. This is a critical element of sweep picking. And you can hear that the notes are divided. You don't want the, you don't want this sound. And the frets that I play on with my ring finger in this part is the ninth fret over the A and D string. So you can see I roll my ring finger here. And then I move into another of those quite challenging techniques, if this is new to you. I use my index finger for that same technique again, the rolling technique, where it's crucial that you divide the notes up. Once I move from the G string into the B string, the, the G string actually lets go of the fret. And this is the awesome thing about this because once it, that happens, then uh, the G string stops from playing the note. And then we continue very fast and fluently into the B string. And it, uh, the exact and the exact opposite happens here when I move from the B string to the G string. So this is a critical element of sweep picking that you really need to master. 
So please don't skip uh, drilling this technique in itself. And once I hit the G and B string here, 7th fret, I use my little finger on the 12th fret on the B string and then pull off again. Regarding the pick, I play my last down stroke here on the B string and then I move into an up stroke. And then I move back again, pulling off from 12 to the 7th. And then do that rolling motion again of the index finger into the G string. Now when I move into the D string, we're not going to play that rolling motion again. Because from the D string, I move into the A string with another finger. So I really need to be alert and very fast here. You come from an upstroke on the A string, the ninth fret, and then you move into a downstroke on the eleventh fret with my little finger. So that all fits together very nice. And then I move into the D string with my ring finger this time. This is my preferred uh, fingering anyway. And then into uh, to the G string on the eleventh fret with my long finger, and into the B string with my ring finger. So the the ring finger has a lot of work to do in this. You can use your long finger instead if you want to do that instead. I noticed a lot of people do that. Anyway, once we're here on the 12th fret on the B string, we continue into the high E string with our index finger on the 10th fret. And then we turn the pick around from a down stroke to an up stroke with the little finger here on the 14th fret. And I move back again. Pulling off again here uh, and moving back again to uh, 12 on the B, 11 on the G, 12 on the D. And then I play an upstroke here on the D string, on the A string, 14th fret, and then a downstroke on the 9th fret. And then because I'm, I do have one more note to play here and uh, I sort of used up all of my picking motion in the sweep, sweep picking technique. So I hammer on that 14th fret here. Same deal with the high E string. I play a down stroke here on the 10, up on the 14. So I have yet another note to play, and I used up all my picking motion, so I pull off. The second time that I play this arpeggio, I continue into the, let's call it the third inversion of the same B minor arpeggio. Jump up here with our little finger to the 19th fret and pull off to the 14th fret with my index finger. And I pull off and then I move into the B string with the long finger. And then I do that rolling technique again and I use my ring finger again here to roll over the G string and the D string 16th fret. And here it starts to get really interesting because if you know this shape, this is for some reason for a lot of people the first sweep picking shape that they learn. But once we're into the D string here, we roll down to the 16th fret on the D string, we slide down to the 12th fret. After I've slid down here to the 12th fret, I move into the 14th fret with the little finger. And this was really, I gotta tell you, uh, challenging for me to, to make this fit into the rhythmical pattern because the rhythmical pattern, it's um bit of a doozy because you, you actually got to make it fit into the music. Once the music is going and you can play the tech and you, and you are able to do the technical part of it, it's not really a problem at all because you sort of fit in the rhythmical patterns into the music. That's no problem. But if you play to a metronome at a slow pace, it can really be challenging because you sort of actually need to take the speed up and down to a few spots uh, to make it fit. So I would actually suggest that you practice it without the metronome. Once you're able to take it up a little bit to the speed, then you can take the metronome and, and sort of fit it uh, around the metronome to actually start and stop at the correct place. So once we're back here on the A string, 14th fret, then I move down with my index finger to the 8th fret on the A string and I play an F major arpeggio. Then I play a pretty, I would say, standard sweep picking arpeggio, um, which is nice, and I do it twice. It's with my index finger here, 8th fret, hammering on to the 12th fret, with the little finger, and then I use 
the rolling motion to the max here on the D, G and B string to 10th fret. You can see, you can hear each individual note. Once you've rolled your long finger, or you could actually also choose your ring finger, that feels more natural to your hand. Then I move into the high E string, playing the 8th fret with my index finger and then the 13th fret with my little finger. So pulling off and then moving back again. And what you also need to make sure of is, is that you actually position your fingers when you need to roll. You position your fingers so that you don't need to adjust it while you're playing it because that'll surely uh, mess up uh, the experience. Once I've pulled off here, I, I make sure that my long finger is positioned in a way so I can do that rolling motion. And that's, that goes for all, uh, all the patterns where you, where you are rolling the fingers. And we play that twice. We have two picking strokes and one note in spare, which will then be either a hammer on on the low string and a pull off on the high string of the pattern. So you can see here I play an upstroke here on the 12th fret A string, then a downstroke on the 8th and then a hammer on back again because I play that sweep picking pattern twice and then I actually uh, play that same shape, exactly the same shape from the 12th fret and uh, since we do that we actually get to, because we're playing the 6 tuplets, we get this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then we start on the same note with the index finger so we get that which would actually be an upstroke and a downstroke on the little finger and index finger pretty cool I think and then I just play that same shape again so we get an A major here 12 on the A string hammering onto 16 with our little finger and then again doing that rolling motion with the long finger on the D, G and B string, which in this case is 14th fret. Reaching the high E string, playing 12, 17 and pulling off to 12 again, moving back again. And once we are back here on the A string again with our little finger, we play, we stay in A, but we play the, we could call it the previous inversion. So once we hit here the, the 16th, we move all the way down with our index finger to so the 7th fret, hammering on, and that this is once again a quite a nice stretch I think. So you need to having this um, position with your thumb and this position with your hand and avoiding this way of playing because this will certainly challenge your playing even more than it is already and you want to make it as easy as possible. So anyway we are on 7 here with our index finger on the A string hammering on to the 12th fret and then we continue our sweeping pattern and this is one of, once again one of those uh, arpeggios where we don't roll. So if you don't like rolling this will be uh, probably one of your favorite arpeggios. So the ring finger on the 11th fret D string and then the index finger on the 9th fret on the G string continuing to the 10th fret my long finger and finally on the high E string with my index finger 9th fret and this is also a downstroke and then an upstroke on the 12th pulling off again because we have three notes and only two picking strokes. Pulling back again. Once we're here on the back here on the 12th fret with our little finger we move into the E string playing a D major. It's really cool this one, really cool because I want to play six tuplets again and I so it goes like this one two three four five six one two three four five six and the interesting thing about it is that it turns sort of turns around on the B string again like the B minor in the beginning pretty cool shape so once we move into this D major shape which is a really cool shape because it enables us to start here to play this exact inversion and still get six tuplets if we played it all the way up to the high E string, which is uh, for many people, including myself, the most um, common way to play this shape, that we get an uneven uh, a number of notes and are not uh, able to play the six tuplets that we want. So, so turning it around here from the B string, 
uh, makes us able to play those six tablets, which is really cool. Plus, it also gives new ideas and adds yet another aspect to our old traditional sweep picking triad. So we play this one three times. Um, the first note starts here on the low E string, 10th fret. And uh, I do this with my index finger and then uh, with my little finger on the 14th fret. Continuing into the A and D string yet again with that rolling technique here that we've discussed into detail. Then after the D string we continue into the G string with our long finger, 11th fret. And then here comes the interesting thing which is the 10th and 15th fret on the B string where we turn things around and then continuing back again to the 11th fret G string and then 12 on the D and A, 14 and 10 on the low E string. And we do this three times. The next shape starts on the A string. Repeat the F sharp here, which we play on the uh, low E string with our little finger here. We play that note once again, but starting on the A string with our index finger, ninth fret. Playing that major shape from the A string once again, but just to make sure that we get the right notes, it's a F uh, major shape. Um, and we play on the A string, we play with our index finger here, ninth fret, and then continuing into the 13th fret with our little finger. And then we do the, the rolling to the max again here with our long finger. Or you could use your ring finger if that feels more natural, of course. What feels more, most natural, you should definitely do that to get the quickest results. 9, 13 here on the A string and then again rolling over the D, G and B string with our long finger or ring finger, whatever fits you. And then continuing into the high E string with our index finger, 9th fret and 14th fret. Pulling off again and uh, moving in again with our long finger. Uh, and remember, make sure that you arrange your fingering around the, the rolling technique. So when we move into this part of the F sharp major here, I make sure that I position my long finger in a way so it's able to roll. There's nothing worse than moving into the B string here uh, with the tip of my finger, which I would normally do if I just played a scale or something, and then finding out that I actually need to play the rest of the uh, move into the next string because I, I end up doing something like this. Um, you know, trying to manipulate the finger moving into the next string, and I almost certainly will will uh, will start pitching the note, and which sucks. So, so this is certainly something that you need to get used to, and this is also one of the reasons that I wanted to divide this into several pieces. Once you play this, moving into the A string again with our little finger, we uh, move all the way up to the 14th fret with our index finger here on the A string as well, and then we play a B minor. We play that in another uh, inversion that the one which you started with. And the notes are uh, with our index finger here on the 14th fret A string and then 17 with our little finger on the A string as well. And I play the rolling technique again, this time with my ring finger. Um, and this, this is the 16th fret on the D and G string, then moving into the B string with our long finger this time, 15th fret, and then on the high E string I get this fourth interval here. Um, 14th with my index finger and then with my little finger I play 19, pulling off again, moving in here to the B string, 15th fret, and then again making sure that my ring finger is positioned in a way so that I can easily do that rolling technique. Really make sure that this, that, that this is one of the things that you really pay attention to when practicing sweep picking. Playing this one three times. And then when I end with my little finger the third time here on the 17th fret, I move back into uh, A major. So instead of uh, playing that uh, B again, which I did three times, then I move back here to the uh, 12th fret. And this is again a shape that we've been playing many times. Then I play the 12th note, hammering on to the 16th fret. Uh, so the 16th fret here with my little finger and then again the rolling technique. I prefer to use the long finger for this one. 
So I roll over the DG and B string 14th fret, continuing to the high E string uh, on the tw uh, 12th fret with my index finger and then my little finger here on the 17th fret. Down, up, pull off and then returning here to the 16th fret with my little finger. So what happens is actually I move from that from that A major that we previously played and then I once I return here with my little finger to the 16th fret on the A string I move all the way down to the D string 6th fret with my index finger hammering on to the D string 9th fret and then rolling my long finger up here on the 9th fret as well on the G and B string and then playing um, 7 and 12 it's actually the same as a as a E major, but I start on the third here. If you play it like I do, um, make sure that once you've played the first note and you move into the long finger, just let go of the index finger because if you don't do this, it will certainly be harder to perfect the synchronization. So once I've done the pull off here from 12 to 7, I roll back again here with my long finger and again arrange my finger around being able to roll over the B, G and D string. So pulling off here and then up, up, up with the pick here. And then what happens is yet another interesting way to play this is I move up with my index finger to the A string. So what I actually get is um, an up stroke and then a pull off, up, up, up and then up again. But this time all the way over here with my index finger on the A string, 11th fret. Since I've played an up stroke here on the 11th, I'm, I, can ease, I can play a down stroke here um, on the same string, uh, a, st a string with my ring finger this time, um, 14th fret. And then continuing into a row of down strokes here. And again, I roll my finger here. And also, uh, this is yet another sweep picking pattern where, where I start on the third root note is E. So continue in with my ring finger 14th fret A string into the 14th fret D string and then into the G string 13th fret with my long finger and then again the barring technique with my index finger on the 12th fret B and D string. And then I play an up stroke here since I played a down stroke here on the 12th and then I play an up stroke here on the 16th fret slide it up to the 19th fret. So what happens is I actually just play the next inversion of the E major once I've slid up here to the 19th fret, I pull off with my little finger to the 16th with the, to my index finger and then playing in a row of upstrokes here. Um, so I move into the B string with my long finger and again continue into the G string with my index finger. Into the D string 18th fret with my ring finger and then here on the A string I use my little finger for the 19th fret and this is also an upstroke and then a downstroke on the 14th fret, hammering on again to the 19th, continuing into those same notes again. And then I play something that sounds a little weird. I actually play the same shape, but I just alter one of the notes. I move my little finger up to 20, but still pull off to the 16th. So this is actually an E major shape, an E major triad, but I've added the C, which is the flattened sixth. So after pulling off here from the C, which is positioned on the 20th fret, pulling off to 16 and then moving into the B string again, same shape, 17 with the long finger on the B and then 16 on the G string, back again to the B string and back again to the uh, 16th fret with my index finger. So I pull off from the 18th fret to the 13th fret and then I roll my long finger over the B, G and D string. Continuing into the A string with my little finger on the 17th and index finger on the 13th. And then I hammer on again to the 17th here. And then I do this thing here, which Jason did a lot uh, when he played sweeping up edges, which is, uh, sounds really cool, I think. So hammering on again to the 17th and then I move in again here with my long finger to the 15th fret D string and also up here rolling it up to the 15th fret G string and moving back again. Starting that shape all over again so I move all the way back here again to the 6th 
Fred. So this is a piece that I would certainly suggest that you focus on isolating that piece in itself and just drilling that until it feels comfortable. The grand finale of this sweep picking pattern is um, since I ended uh, here on the B flat, once I get down here the fourth time, then I actually play that same pattern again all the way to the top, 13 and 17 on the A string, and then with my long finger rolling over the D, G and B string, 15th fret, and moving into the high E string, 13th fret, hammering on to the 18th fret, sliding all the way up to the 22nd fret, which is the next inversion of the B flat. Pulling off to 18 and then rolling. And you can see also that I adjust my index finger in a way so that I'm able to roll down to the B string. Once I've slid up here from the 18th to the 22nd, I make sure that when I do the pull off from my little finger, I make sure that I position my index finger in a way so I'm actually able to roll over those two strings. Pulling off here to the 18th and then rolling in with the same thing into the B string, 18th fret and then continue into 19 with my long finger here and yet doing yet another rolling technique this time with my ring finger over the D and A string 20th fret and then finally moving into the E string playing 22 with an upstroke and then playing 18 with my index finger with a downstroke hammering on moving back again in that same shape playing all the way to the top 22nd fret and then from the 22nd fret sliding back again to the previous inversion which had its last note on the 18th fret. So I pull off again here with my little finger to the uh, index finger from 18 to 13 and then rolling my long finger over the B, G and D string 15th fret and ending it here on the A string 17 